What's up guys? Today we've got another subwoofer we're gonna be checking out. It is the Bowers & Wilkins DB3D. First off, before we get this thing unboxed, shout out to Value Electronics for supplying this subwoofer for us to review today. Thank you, Robert, for sending this over. So let's go ahead, get this thing unboxed. So this is one of Bowers and Wilkins' smallest high-end subwoofer. Comes in three different colors. Comes in the black color, the walnut, and also in the white. Inside the box, we get some documentation. The accessories pack, which includes rubber feet or spiked feet, some more rubber feet. And we also get three power cords. Here are two separate grills. So I'm just gonna take this and flip it upside down. It might not look like it, but this little subwoofer weighs a ton. It's uh, 55 pounds. 55 pounds might not seem like a lot, but for a little tiny cube like this, actually feels like quite a bit. So the subwoofer, features two eight inch drivers, one on each side. There's one on the left side and also one on the right side. So it is a force canceling subwoofer. Size wise, this reminds me very much of the KEF KF92, especially in its size. I know the KF92 has nine inch drivers. These are eight inch, but this one definitely has a more solid build to it. It doesn't feel like plastic, but this is the white finish. It's kind of like a satin white. It's not exactly glossy. It's not exactly flat either. So very satiny finish. On the front, we've got just the plain front. We've got the Bowers and Wilkins logo on the bottom here. And also, I think that's a, I think that's a power indicator. And on the bottom is the feet, which you can screw in those either spiked feet or the rubber feet. Around back, we have XLR ins and outs. We have unbalanced RCA ins and outs. We have two triggers. RS-232 port and the power input. Size-wise, it measures 14 inches tall by 12 inch, 12 and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches deep. So it's nice, small form factor. It is powered by a Class D 1000 watt amplifier and the frequency response to this goes down to 8.5 Hertz. Wishful thinking, especially for a small box, but the KF KF92, I think, went down to something like 9 hertz, if I'm not mistaken. So this might be a very surprising little subwoofer. I'm very excited to check this out. Obviously, I don't think you're going to get like 120 dB at 8.5 hertz in a big theater room. So, I mean, it's probably like 8.5 hertz at something like, you know, 60 or 70 dB. But we're definitely going to check this out in the theater. And if you do want to cover up the drivers, the grills do attach magnetically. So like that. And the other side, just like that. So, gives it a nice, nice clean look. So let's go ahead and get this thrown into the home theater and we'll give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm gonna be placing the subwoofer in the front center of my room directly under my screen. This is where the sub sounded the best. It's gonna be hooked up to a Trinov Altitude processor and Macintosh combo. And I'll be using the Zapiti Media Player and Cladescape to play demos. I won't be using any room correction through my processor. Instead, I'm gonna only be using what's available in the subwoofer to get it dialed in with the PSB speakers that I'm also reviewing. The DB3D also has an iOS and Android app that you'll need to adjust the settings to get it all set up. Once you open up the app, there is a section for subwoofer guides. There's setup, placement, settings, advanced, and troubleshooting. In this section here, you can change the name of the subwoofer if you'd like. And in this section are the settings. For inputs, you can configure the XLR as stereo, LFE, or you can disable it. You can also do the same for RCA. For this video, we're gonna keep it on LFE since we're putting it in the home theater. The next section is input gain. You've got from negative 10 to plus 10 dB. It's also got a few different EQ settings. The one that we're gonna be using is flat. There's also movie, music, and then custom. Under custom, you've got five bands that you can adjust from negative 10 up to plus five dB. Now, if you do wanna change the connection from LFE over to stereo, there will be another section that pops up on the bottom, which says other speakers. Once you configure that, you can use it with 
speakers that are not B&W speakers. So if you choose other speakers, you can turn the low pass filter on or off. You can adjust that from 25 to 150 Hertz. You've got two different slopes, 12 dB and 24 dB. Phase, you've got zero, 90, 180, and then 270. If you are using this with B&W speakers, you've got a list of different speakers you can choose from. You've got from the 801 D4s, their newest models, all the way down to the 707 S2s. Like I said, for this video, since it's gonna be in home theater, we're just gonna keep that on LFE. And that wraps it up for the app. First thing we're gonna pop on is Blade Runner 2049 on 4K. We're gonna to listen to that increasing note that happens at the very beginning of the movie. For a small subwoofer, this can hold a note extremely well without any lumpiness on its way up. So it remained clean as the bass note got louder in volume. It gave me a little vibration through the floor and up to my chair, but it's not enough to where it's putting pressure on your body. If you've heard this demo with a bigger subwoofer, then you know what I'm talking about. Adding a second DB3D would probably add that extra sensation. That being said, there's still plenty of output from this little guy to where it filled my space with a very clean bass. Next, I popped in Fury for that instant pop and go from those tank shots. The shots hit hard from 35 to 40 hertz. I've already had these subs hooked up in my two channel setup for a bit, so I know these would snap pretty quickly for this demo. When the machine guns would let loose, the DB3D would snap like a whip crack. It's tight with agile refinement that I've gotten used to in my two channel listening, which translates just as impressively for home theater. However, if I was listening at near uncomfortable levels, I was able to push it to its limit, which can cause it to become localizable. Just because it can play loud and clean, you might find yourself trying to push it harder and harder. So you've got to keep in mind that it's only a small 12 inch box. Again, having more than one subwoofer would spread the workload, so there'd be less of a chance of damaging the sub. And finally, we've got Edge of Tomorrow. If this goes down to 8 hertz, then this demo should be really special. We already know that one db3d can struggle when pushed hard and that's still the case here at my normal listening levels this will fill the air with surprisingly low pressure down low it's not vibrating the hair on the back of your neck or making your pant legs flap but it still sounded better than what you'd expect it to if i pushed it too hard i could start hearing some creaks coming from the enclosure so i did have to back it off quickly because i felt like i was going to cause some damage other than that, it sounded fantastic at normal listening levels, and it did hit all those low notes. It just won't hit those neighbor disturbing loudness levels. Now, it did take a few measurements at my listening seat. These are the responses I got from MySpace, so they'll more than likely be different for yours. The first one is EQ set to flat. I got around 10 hertz before it starts to drop off. I've also got a dip at 55 hertz, which is normal for my room when I'm only using one sub. Having two would have taken care of that. The second one is EQ set to movie, which looks pretty much the same as flat. And this one is with EQ set to music. I got to 8.5 Hz before it drops off rather steeply. At the time of this video, the DB3D is selling for $3,500. I tell you what, for a tiny subwoofer, this thing blew me away. It sounded so much bigger than its size would let on. If you walked into a dark room and put on a movie, you might think there was a 12 incher or maybe something bigger in there. Now this is going to excel in a medium to smaller size spaces, so if you do have a bigger home theater, you're going to want to get more than one. For subs, you should always have more than one anyways for better even response throughout your space. I think if I had a pair of these, they'd rival the Kef KF92 for more impressive small box home theater performance. I did find them snappier than the 92s and a tad more musical for two channel listening, but the Kef had more low end presence that worked better for movies. 
Another small sub that came to mind was the SVS SB3000. For the price, you could buy three of them for the price of one BMW. And yes, three of them would definitely outperform a single DB3D for home theater. But on a one-on-one -on -one battle, the BMW will deliver a more textured, layered experience, whereas the 3000 would be a step behind as far as speed and attack. The Bowers can also dig deeper. If money wasn't an issue, three BMWs versus three SVSs, I'd go BMW. If you've got BMW speakers and want to reinforce the bottom end, the DB3D would be a perfect match. Or if you've got a smaller home theater and don't want to take up a ton of space, I think you'll find that the DB3D can outperform larger subs for both movies and music. Now, if you are interested in checking out this subwoofer or anything that I've mentioned in this video, then visit valueelectronics.com. So those are my thoughts on the Bowers & Wilkins DB3D subwoofer. Have you guys heard it? And if so, what'd you think of the performance? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Give this video a like if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.